If you're working in a perspective view versus an orthographic one, then you may encounter situations where you can't really zoom in on your geometry without Blender cutting it off. This is due to the clip start value being too high for that situation, and so if you lower it, you'll notice how you can get much closer now before clipping starts. This value also directly affects how close Blender zooms in on your selection when using the View Selected tool. So if I increase the value again, then Blender will focus the selection while zooming out further too. When the value is too low on the other hand, you may also encounter issues, for instance with decals, where as you move away from them, they start to flicker. So for rendering in Eevee especially, or when evaluating your design from a distance, it's best to use bigger values, while for modeling and detail work, smaller values are better. A more convenient tool to cycle through different clip start values is using the clipping toggle in Machine Tools, which comes with three adjustable presets. One for modeling and general work, a very small one for detail work, and a big one for rendering. This way, you don't have to dive into the sidebar panel all the time to type in or drag the value. The Cleanup tool in Machine Tools fixes various geometry issues you encounter while modeling and is designed to be run constantly, which is why it's key mapped conveniently too. By default, you just keep hitting the three key to ensure your model is clean. A little HUD will tell you if there were any issues that have been fixed. The tool removes double vertices, degenerates, loose vertices, loose edges, and optionally loose faces, as well as redundant vertices based on an angle threshold and optionally redundant edges too. But did you know that it also automatically finds holes in your model, which may otherwise not be obvious, by selecting non-manifold edges? This will then allow you to spot them and easily fix them if they are indeed undesired. Did you then know that the tool can also optionally find and select non-planar faces, triangles, and n-gons? All of these can be tremendously helpful depending on the work you are doing, and it's all just contained in this single key-mapped Swiss Army knife of a tool. SmartVert is all about vertex manipulation, mostly merging, but not only. It's smart because what it does varies depending on your selection. For instance, if you have a single vert selected and you invoke SmartVert by default via the one key, it will do a vertex bevel. I mostly use this in cases like these, where I have a two-edge vertex and need some more. With multiple verts selected, SmartVert will then merge to the active vertex. And if you don't have an active vert, because you are box or circle selecting, Smart Vert will merge to the vertex closest to the mouse, right? Like this. And you can also center merge by calling it via Shift 1. Or you can center merge by toggling it from the redo panel. What's cool is that Smart Vert also works for edge selections, where you don't have an active vert either. And so it will again merge to the one closest to the mouse. And I don't want to blow your mind here. But if you have multiple separate edge selections, then it will merge per edge selection. For example, here, I want to merge all of these over towards the right side. Just like that. Just one key press. If I want to go to the other side, I just move the mouse over. As simple as that. For face selections, it works the same. Also per face island, and also based on the mouse position. And you can center merge face and edge selections via Shift 1 2, of course. Now, sometimes you want to merge rows of vertices like this over to another row. So all of these verts over here, perhaps, and you don't want to do it like this, right? That takes way too long, and you can do it either via edge selections, like I've just shown in part 1, like this, or like that. Or you can do it via a path selection, where you select the first and last verts on each side, and you do it in a U-shape like this, which saves you from adjusting the view back and forth multiple times, especially when the part covers a bigger area on your mesh, or you're zoomed in a lot. You then merge the paths by invoking Smart Vert via Alt-1. And if you want to merge to the opposite site, you just start your selection on the other side. Again, select the first and last vert, then reverse back in a U-shape. Also, sometimes you don't want to merge, but create edges instead. And you can't use the bridge tool because there is a face already, right? And so again, you do a U-shape path selection, and then you call Smart Vert via Control-Alt-1 this time, and it will then do the individual edge connections for you. If you struggle to remember these mod key combinations, then know that you can always just use the single one key and then do the rest via the redo panel.
That does come at the cost of extra clicks, though. Oh, and I forgot to mention, you can also center merge paths too, but only from the redo panel. Sometimes you want to move a vert in the plane of a face, but you don't have an edge to slide on. And so you can select that vert, select a target vert, invoke Smart Vert Slide Extend by a Shift Alt 1, and then move along the direction between the two. You can then even snap it to another edge via control. This works with multiple verts as well, even if the target vert is part of another face. And it works in edge mode too, even with multiple selected edges. Here the verts that are being moved are determined by the mouse position. Now oftentimes you want to create a cut like this that is aligned with another edge, and you can use Slide Extend for that. Just select it, Slide Extend, and snap it. Or, what can be useful sometimes is to duplicate a vert, extrude from it, then Slide Extend that new vert. We now have this loose edge here that's perfectly aligned, and we can just knife project it now. Other times you want to do an inset like this, but actually don't want it to be cyclic, and instead have two of its edges end at the side. Instead of manually doing knife cuts and aligning the verts, you can just slide extend these edges into that edge here and then maybe punch it. And maybe your conditions are not perfectly planar, and when you then slide extend into that edge, they won't hit it correctly, right? And so, you can use Edge Project via Alt to be extra sure the edges end exactly on that edge. Also, when you are slide extending a single edge in a situation like this, it will, of course, create a non-planar end face. And so, what you can do is toggle Flatten via the F key, which will ensure the face remains planar. Note that it won't work when you have multiple edges, because it's not clear in what way the face should be flattened then. But that's not a problem, because you can simply do the multi-edge slide extend first, and then follow up with a single edge to flatten the face. Last but not least, sometimes you have a situation like this, where you want to align an object's face with another face, and you can use Smart Vert Slide Extend for that by snapping the object's edges to the angled face. Slide Extend is an extremely powerful and versatile tool, and almost always faster than just manual vertex sliding. It could easily be its own add-on, but instead it's just one of hundreds of machine tools features.